My name is Lolita Lopez. I'm the president and CEO of Westside Family Healthcare. So I want to um, welcome you to our Northeast Health Center site, and uh, we're happy to happy to host this event today. A uh, special <coughs> thank you to our speakers. We have Governor John Carney with us today, Insurance Commissioner Trinidad Navarro, Health Secretary. Dr. Kara Odom Walker and Sarah Cruz, who is our West Side, one of our West Side navigators. So I'm um, glad to have you here. Um, I, I don't think we have any uh, members of our delegation here or staff. It's kind of a busy day. <laughs> so we'll give them a pass. <clears throat> so I'm just going to speak for a few moments. Um, so community health centers uh, like West Side, we continue to play a critical role in getting folks enroll and making sure that our most vulnerable populations have access to affordable health coverage. And because of this, we're honored um, to be the kickoff site and to highlight what is our sixth open enrollment period. I can't believe it's been six years already. It's like part of our, um, part of our framework to do this. Um, so it's the sixth year of the uh, marketplace. So here in Delaware, our efforts have resulted in educating folks and assisting thousands of individuals um, in enrolling in coverage. Our uninsured rate is at a historic low, I think reduced by nearly half uh, when we got started, which is really, really amazing and very proud of Delaware um, for, for that. Uh, that means that more Delawareans have access to primary and specialty care, and that's more than ever before and what uh, the most important thing about this whole effort. So with persistence and empathy, our enrollment specialists work tirelessly um, during a very brief period to get, to get folks enrolled. Our neighbors have become to count on us. We are able to dispel um, fears about the system and how to get enrolled. We are a trusted source of information and we are able to connect them to a medical home for their care. There, our team is committed to ensuring that all Delawareans have access to in-person assistance when and where they need it. Our health centers continue to be access points um, for enrollment services. And we offer evening and weekend walk-in <coughs> sessions at our health uh, centers as well. So we're making sure that um, every chance possible uh, folks can come in and get enrolled. We are available by appointment or, or walk-in. So um, without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce our governor and uh, Governor John Carney, who has been a champion for health over many years, and especially a ch our champion, community health center sponsor, supporter, uh, always there for our efforts. So with no further ado, I will introduce the governor, John Carney. And Hi, my friend. Lovely, lovely <laughs> it's great to be back here <coughs> at uh, West Side's Northeast uh, Wilmington Health Center. Lolita and I were talking uh, about the years that we have spent <coughs> trying to increase access for more Delawareans across our state going back nearly 20 years. And Alita appropriately said that uh, everything that I know about healthcare I learned from her. <laughs> and part of that is how important uh, service delivery places like this, uh, like what Westlight has here in the northeast section of town, uh, the other facilities that you have there on on uh, Fourth Street and others across our state. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the fact that the uh, marketplace is open for enrollment for this coming year and others are going to talk about that but I thought what I would do is take a couple minutes to just set the context in terms of how far where we've come from, how far we've come from. Lolita uh, alluded to that a little bit. Our insurance rates after the Affordable Care Act went into effect and expansions of Medicaid, or had already done a, a number of those expansions. Our own insurance rates here in Delaware are around five, six percent. We'll see what they, they uh, turn out uh, this year. When I started uh, working with Lolita and others on healthcare access nearly 20 years ago as the then Secretary of Finance and ex-officio member of the Delaware Healthcare Commission, our own insurance rates in Delaware were about 11 to 12 percent, so almost double 
uh, what they are today. We didn't have a tool like the Affordable Care Act that was passed six or seven years ago that uh, created these marketplaces that we're going to talk about today. And so what we did was we focused on the populations that were tended to be uninsured. And if you think about the total population, most of the people who are uninsured are people that don't work for our state or local government. They're people that don't work for a large company or a large employer that provides health insurance. There are people that are they're not senior citizens who are on Medicare. They're not low-income families who have access to Medicaid. And so, by and large, they're mostly hard-working people who go to work every day. Uh, they may be a sole proprietor of their business. They probably work for a small business or they work for a company that doesn't provide health insurance and aren't required to provide health insurance uh, by the federal uh, statute. And so affordability gets to be a big issue for those folks. And uh, we've learned, I think, a lot over the last six years that uh, providing a marketplace that uh, offers affordable coverage for those individuals, we're talking about individuals mostly, or folks that uh, work for a small business can be very expensive because it's a very small pool in our state, probably less than 100,000 lives total, as I recall my numbers, and 50,000 um, in, uh, individuals that are, that are in that situation. And so over the years, we created a, a network of service delivery sites like Westside, like La Red, in Sussex County, like Del Delmarva Rural Ministries and its predecessor successor organizations in Kent County, where people could come in and pay on a sliding scale, get access to actual care. They didn't have insurance to pay for it, but they could get the primary care uh, that they needed. Uh, uh, professional, other professional services a little bit uh, more difficult. So when the Affordable Care Act came along and provided an opportunity for health insurance for individuals and small businesses. Our enrollment went up by, I think, uh, the peak was over 25,000 uh, people enrolled a year. I'm seeing nodding, nodding around the room. And, uh, and the expansion of Medicaid as well picked up uh, several thousand additional people to reduce our, uh, our rates of, of uh, those uninsured by a significant amount. So today we're announcing once again uh, the, the fact that the marketplace is open. Unfortunately this year, because there are those at the federal level, and I, we should uh, shout out to our congressional delegation, Senator Carper and Senator, Senator Coons and Congresswoman Blunt Rochester, who have been working on improving the Affordable Care Act. Unlike other members of the House and the Senate who have been, uh, have been working on taking away different aspects of the Affordable Care Act, making it more difficult uh, for uh, people to find that health insurance coverage. So this is a, a good day. We want to encourage people to go to the marketplace. We don't have as many options this year because of uh, some of the challenges that we face uh, as a small state. We don't have as many people that are out there working on getting people as, as enrolled because uh, those in Congress that would do away with the Affordable Care Act took the, some of those resources away. We don't have as favorable rates as we could have because some of the reinsurance provisions in the bill were stripped out as well. Notwithstanding those challenges, we're ready uh, and able to, to uh, open the marketplace this year. We would encourage anybody who is without health insurance to go to the marketplace and see if you can find a an affordable plan there. So it's my privilege now to introduce our insurance commissioner, Trinidad Navarro. Trini has a very difficult job when affordability is the kind of primary impediment for families and individuals getting uh, coverage for themselves and their families. The interaction that Trini and his office has with the insurance companies as they come in for rate increases is incredibly important. And uh, Trinidad, we really appreciate all the work that you do to keep those rates as low as you possibly can. I know you come through the numbers that the insurance companies uh, uh, put forward there and doing a good job at that. Trinidad Navarro Insurance Commission.
Thank you, sir. <laughs> I, I genuinely do appreciate uh, those comments. Because the truth is, it, it, it is a balancing act. Uh, I'm happy to say that uh, this year we only uh, approved a rate increase of about 3%. So that means we're trending in the right direction. <laughs> You know, we look back two years ago, it was 35%. And last year, it was about 25%. And uh, this year, we really battled with uh, the difficulties of trying to make sure that we offer uh, a, a product that's affordable, uh, but while also making sure that companies remain solvent. You know, that's a big part of this equation, is to make sure that companies can actually make money. You know, they're allowed to make money. And this year, Highmark did make money. And that's part of our challenges. We're trying to bring additional companies to Delaware. And once the, they find that it's actually profitable in your Delaware, uh, there's a likelihood that we could have more companies which would ultimately offer uh, more options for consumers. So we still have um, coverage for pre-existing conditions. And one of the things that drives me bonkers is when I hear folks uh, across the country who are saying things like, oh, well, we are making sure that we are ensuring that people who have pre-existing conditions are still covered. When these same people these same people are the ones who are trying to, what I call, kill the Affordable Care Act by a thousand paper cuts. See, folks, it's not about voting. It's about what Ms. Lolita said earlier about offering affordable options and access to care. When you have others who have tried their best to destroy the ACA, and now, we're just a few days away from election time, they're touting out that they're protecting pre-existing conditions. It's really not fair. You see folks in this room, I've been trying for, for years and working very hard for years to put together something that works for folks who can least afford it. And I'm really, really proud of what we've been able to do. Uh, the message for me is, to, to I want to share with the public is, sign up now, okay? Make sure that you, you look, because many folks last year, the rates have come down. For some folks, bronze plan will be free. And I'll say that again. For some folks, the bronze plan will be free. Uh, so, you know, I think last year some folks were uh, upset. It was, too, it was too costly, and that still may be the case for, for many families. But we are doing our best to make sure that folks who have pre-existing conditions uh, are, are still covered. We're making sure that uh, our children up to the age of 26 still can be on their parents' insurance. And all the wonderful things about the ACA that we collectively in this room are trying to protect for uh, the last couple of years. Uh, it's a shame. It's a shame that people are trying to take credit for it when they've actually done nothing but try to kill the ACA. Uh, it's now my, my honor and, and privilege to introduce our next speaker, uh, Secretary Karen Odom Walker. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Barra. Thank you for your leadership in making sure that people have access. Thank you, Lolita, for hosting this event and making sure that people have a place to go when they most need it. And Governor Carney, for all of your work and championship of making sure that people uh, know how to access health care and we're really serving the most vulnerable. As always, I am just uh, so thankful for the opportunity to get the word out and make sure that people know where they can go to access and navigate. By training, I'm a family physician, so for years I've seen patients at the intersection of trying to decide between buying food and buying uh, medicines or accessing health care. And this is an opportunity for people to really get affordable access to health care, which we know matters. It is so important to have the health care marketplace in place. We've heard stories over the years of people who have delayed care and then got access to insurance but discovered they have uh, a cancer that needed to be treated. Or they were um, taking care of their family and just so busy they were worried about what it would cost them to get uh, vaccinations for their little ones and then were able to access not only the vaccinations but comprehensive screening and coverage. We've heard about young people who were really trying to figure out how to bridge until that new job kicked in and now they were really able to make sure they had coverage. I think that this at our sixth year of open enrollment is why we know access is so important for Delawareans. It's a reminder that the marketplace is not just about the numbers and the spreadsheets, it's about people and people who need access to healthcare. Last week, I've had a lot of people ask questions about open enrollment and why that it's so important to sign up now, sign up early, not wait till the last minute. Uh, someone asked if I was worried about any challenges in this current climate and season. 
So I talked about the fact that there is still confusion about the Affordable Care Act right now. There's still a lot of confusion about whether it's still the law of the land. Yes, it is, despite the thousand paper cuts. We really do need to make sure that people know there are options and affordable options. We know that the end of the federal tax penalty for not having health insurance um, beginning in 2019 is in place, but we also know that there is reduced in-person uh, uh, enrollment assistance so that you really want to know how to get access, how much it will cost. There, there are reduced locations uh, to get that information. We also know they've put a little bit of uh, technical barriers in the way, including scheduled downtime and maintenance on Sundays, often when many people have time and flexibility to enroll. That's very unfortunate. And we know that we're having trouble getting funding to get the word out. There's little federal marketing support, so you won't see the big billboards and the campaigns that you had early on. Despite all of that, we know Commissioner Navarro did a fantastic job and had a strong effort in holding the line on premium rate increases and making sure that people would be eligible for a financial assistance. We do have that in place, and that is a tremendous success. Despite that, with the benefits, there are challenges, and we have to continue to get the word out about connections to care. I said to this reporter, I'm not sure what will happen this year, but we have to continue to get the word out, and it is much more about leveraging the networks and the communities and your neighbors and just telling people there is access. So as a doctor and as cabinet secretary, I know that when it comes to health insurance and connections to care, we should bring down these barriers and not put them up. Despite that, we are facing increased barriers. So we need to figure out how to help people and urge them for those who aren't sure if they can afford insurance and coverage on the marketplace to go and look into it because 82% of people actually do have financial assistance available to them. That is tremendous. There are free and low cost options. Too many people think that the tax credits that reduce monthly premiums may not apply to them. But the income cutoff for an individual is actually $48,000, and for a family of four, it's $100,000. That means you should definitely look into whether there are financial assistance opportunities. For the 82% of current enrollees who receive financial assistance, those tax credits help to reduce the average monthly premium to $122. I also urge people who already have insurance to think about comparing your options. We do a really great job looking for that new dishwasher or that new car, but when it comes to health insurance, it seems a little intimidating and scary. We'll go find out more information if you want in-person assistance. Find out, find out how much it might cost to have a silver plan, a bronze plan, or even a gold plan. So I'm gonna put a phone number out there, you'll hear more about it, but to make an appointment with a marketplace navigator, please call Westside Family Healthcare here at 302-472-8655 in Newcastle County, or 302-678-2205 in Kent, Sussex County, or go to the website choosehealthde.com. And when you're ready to shop for your plan or enroll, go to healthcare.gov. The deadline to enroll is fast. It's December 15th, so try to sign up now. But more importantly, I want you to learn more from one of our navigators who works here, helps Delawareans walk through the options, and has many more stories and personal successes. Sarah Cruz, please. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Sarah Cruz, and I have had the pleasure to assist Delawareans enroll in health coverage for three years as a navigator with Westside Family Healthcare. Time and again, I've witnessed the joy and relief that families feel when they um, are able to enroll in an affordable health plan. And many times at the beginning of appointments, when um, consumers come in, they express that they're worried they won't be able to find affordable health care. Um, but when we're finished, they're smiling, they're relieved that they have been able to not only enroll in a health plan, but also um, that, the, that the application process went smoothly. It wasn't so stressful as they thought. Um, many have shared that they're grateful to have local re a local resource to help guide them through the process since many times insurance and also the application process can be confusing um, and intimidating. And this is especially the case when we encounter more complex circumstances like families who are working multiple jobs just to make ends meet. 
Our assisters do work diligently to ensure that um, the individuals we help not only enroll in health insurance, but then also know how to utilize that health insurance later on. Many have shared that they do trust me to help break down the insurance terminology um, and also in, in a way that they can understand, comprehend, that way they can use their insurance because they know what the terminology means. Because we are a full-time, year-round program, uh, Delawareans have come to count on Westside Family Health Care to help them even after they've enrolled in coverage. And as a sisters, we do get to know the people that we help. So we are available even after the open enrollment period has ended to help out with any questions or concerns they may have. We're here to help all year round at any time. As um, in my firsthand experience, I do recognize the key role that navigators play in ensuring that the community has access to not only health coverage, but also health care. And I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't stress again that um, this year's open enrollment period only runs until December 15th. So we're encouraging all Delawareans to come in, sign up early, and if you see that you need help, reach out to us and we'll be able to assist you. There are also new options on the Delaware Marketplace. Um, so we are encouraging everyone to review the um, Review your own personal circumstances. See what type of health coverage you may need during 2019, and that way you can get in and enroll early. You can schedule an appointment, like the secretary said, with our team by calling 302-472-8655, and we do have multiple languages that we can assist in. You can also learn more about the health coverage by uh, visiting www.choosehealthde.com um, and also www.healthcare.gov. Thank you so much.